Listen. Frightening sounds echo through the halls. Whenever candlelights flicker, where the air is deathly still, that is the time when ghosts are present, practicing their terror with ghoulish delight. There's no turning back now. Just after sundown, when darkness creeps over the land. The dark figures lurk in the shadows. The fangs glisten in the moonlight. And the ghosts of the world become restless. We begin our journey. Join us as we travel into the world of the paranormal, the supernatural, and the bizarre. On Night Watch with your hosts, Todd Sheets, Chris Weisbach, and Hugh McLanahan. Welcome to Night Watch. Uh, I'm your host, as always, Todd Sheets, here with Hugh McClanahan. Oh, yeah. And Johnny Reed. Green citations. Worldwide live tonight here on Night Watch. Very excited to bring you. You know, we've had one of these wonderful gentlemen on the show before. Uh, we, we had the opportunity and the mm-hmm. honor to speak with Walter Flanagan before. Had a great time. Went off on a few tangents that I, I adored. And uh, turned out to be one of our biggest downloaded shows of all time. People love that show. And he's joined tonight by the rest of the cast uh, throughout the evening of the comic book men. Walter Flanagan is here. And also, Ming Chen. Welcome to the show. Hello, everybody. How are you? We're, we're, we're doing great. And we learned earlier on that it's all Ming's fault. <laughs> Uh, always, always. Anything goes wrong, blame me. It's been that way for the last 15 years. Oh. <laughs> See, I can't even watch the show anymore because I just feel so bad for me. I just, I get teared up. I can't do it. <laughs> Your heart's All broken. All in good fun. All in good fun. I know. It's just terrible. That's right. That's right. I have to say, guys, I am so proud <laughs> of what you're doing. I am so proud to say that you're you're back on. Season two's coming up here. How does it feel to be back on the air with season two of The Comic Book Man? Uh, it feels it feels fantastic. Thank you, thank you guys for watching. If it wasn't for you guys, probably wouldn't have gotten into season two. But um, it was uh, it was something I was uh, I was praying dearly for. And, and your prayers were answered, my friend. And you're right. We do watch. And uh, one of, one of my biggest questions is: I'm ready for the DVD of season one. Where's that at? Uh, I don't know. We haven't heard anything about that yet. And uh, I mean, the interesting thing is, uh, my parents live in Shanghai, and uh, they have not see much of the show so i'm dying to get them a dvd copy see me in all my glory and uh you know see all, see how all the white people in america are treating me that's right <laughs> nice. that's right that's right wow <laughs> uh, not everyone can love you like we do man that's just uh, you know yeah you know how it is um, no i'm hoping they i'm hoping they announce it soon it's on uh, it's on netflix right now which is uh, opening up to a, a bigger audience which is great um, but yeah, that hard uh, that hard DVD disc is still king apparently, and uh, yeah, I would love to see it as well. Bonus features, uh, you know, we'll throw some commentary on there, you know, whatever they want. That's right, and and you guys, I know you both know where I'm coming from, Walt. I know for sure uh, from talking to you last time. It, it, you know, we love to stream it on Netflix. That's all fine and dandy, but to me. 
we're still collectors at heart. Just like we love the uh, the actual paper of the comics and the smell of the ink, we love to hold that DVD in our hand with the packaging and put it oh, on yeah. the, the shelf there and show off our comic book men right there to everybody. That's kind of what we want to do. Well, I'm waiting for the fold-out that has them all in the zombie makeup. Or, or yeah, better yet, know. it's like a pop-up The card. pop-up, yeah. yes. Yeah, that'd be great. They're all, they're all the zombies. <laughs> or, or even better Blu-ray. Yeah, I, well, yeah, you know I'm already on the Blu-ray. If it's available, I'm there for sure. Yeah. Walter, how you been, my friend? Good, good. How you been? Man, I have been great. I thought of you uh, because they're coming out with the mini mates of the Werewolf by Night. Are they? I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased. We got a statue and we got a little action figure, but now we're getting some mini mates, and I've seen a couple of Werewolf by Night t-shirts, mm-hmm. so I'm starting to get real excited about this. People are starting to finally see what you and I have seen all these years. <laughs> uh, it's about time. That's all I can say. I agree, man. As a matter of fact, I was on uh, Johnny's show here, Brute Squad, where he talks about comics, and uh, I was on his show, and they asked me my favorite uh, comic series, other than Batman, of course, and I said, of well, course. <laughs> uh, for me, it was always Werewolf by Night, and, uh, and I thought of you instantly because it was the same series you and I talked about with, uh, with the big blowout with Dr. Glitter Knight and Brother Voodoo and everybody, so Topaz. It was a great series, a great run, and, and I, I think of you often because of that, my friend. Oh, thank you. You know, I actually had, um, I didn't mention this last time, but I actually uh, had a, not not really a, a great correspondence, but actually um, I talked to Don Perlin um, via email um, a couple years ago after I had done a book called War the Undead, and um, I sent him a copy saying how much of an influence he was on me. It was pretty cool to hear, you know, hear him talk about some of the stuff from the old days in the 70s on that book. Yeah, you know what? I would have passed out the minute I got the email and opened it up and saw Don Perlin's name. It would have been like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty wild. Yeah, I know most people are like, huh, Don Perlin? But yeah, I mean, he was a big uh, a big influence on me. He, he he drew like very creepy, even normal human beings look creepy. <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. true. I remember so many different uh, things he did, and, and he was like a perfect fit for the book that we love so much. Ming, what do you think of Werewolf by Night? Uh, I, anything that pleases Walt this much, uh, I, he, I, I'm definitely into. Wow, you know, wow. Ming has learned early. Yeah. <laughs> you guys should be ashamed of yourself. It's a good thing. Oh, it's a good man. thing you answered that way. Shame on you guys. Just shame, 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 shame. What's your favorite book series of all time, Ming? Uh, comics or, uh, you know, literary, paranormal. Uh, I've gone on record as saying, uh, uh, I like the uh, the Jack Knight Starman series that uh, DC did a few years back in the '90s. Um, something something that I don't, I don't know why it hooked me so much, but uh, it's something that um, something about the character and something about how they revived him that uh, that I really got into. Um, it was introduced to me by uh, Scott Mosier, Kevin Kevin Smith's producer, and um, yeah, just something I latched onto for whatever reason. And uh, they just came out with a uh, uh, book two. Omnibus that uh, there's book one, book two. It's something everything that everybody should get. I think. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. It's funny because a guy came in my store and they had like the entire run of it. Oh wow! And I wound up picking up the whole run and I I basically read it in three days sitting, and it was just amazing on how great he did. Yeah, something about his background and uh, you know he, he's a, he's not a junk collector. He's a collector of uh, you know fine uh, you know fine artifacts. I like to call them. And then uh, you know reluct- the reluctant superhero. I don't something. Something uh, something that I can I feel like I relate to or something. It's crazy. Well, he was like he, he was very human to me. It was kind of like what would happen if a regular guy fell in this circumstance. Yeah, but he's uh, a regular cool guy though. Well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, now, Johnny, but, talking to you here, watching the comic book man. This has to be inspirational for you because you're you're an independent guy. You own a small comic book store that that's really got a big heart, and you're really out there, you know, every day and night plugging away. And you see what these guys are doing on the show. That's got to be somewhat inspirational for you and for other people like you. Oh, absolutely. For me, it was kind of an extension because it's really funny. Like half my life, I was like always wanting to do a comic shop. And here's a, a real sad, stupid story. But I walked out of Clerks 2. And the whole point of Clerks 2 was they bought the whole Jiffy shop, you know. That, and I was like, you know what? I just need to do it. Silent Bob and Jay did it, and I know it's, you know, cartoon characters and, you know, actors and all movie yeah. characters, right? And I'm like, you know, just follow your dream. And it was like within like six months I had it opened. And then seeing this extension of actually seeing, 
you know, Kevin Smith's friends and everybody there having their own radio show. And it's really, you know, bringing the consciousness of comic books and comic stores to life. I think it's great. I, 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 my hat's off to you guys. Wow. You hear that, you guys? You guys inspire people every day. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. The thing is, I do know that about you. He did. He, he left Clerks 2, and Kevin Smith inspired him, uh, just like he's inspired so many of us, to, uh, to open a comic book shop. I mean, how is it, what is it like doing this with Kevin on a regular basis? Go ahead, Ming. <laughs> <laughs> there is the uh, bus. I mean, I mean for, for me and maybe for Walt in, in, uh, in a little bit, uh, you know, uh, it's crazy. Whatever uh, whatever Kevin says, we do, and then uh, usually it turns out pretty great. Uh, it's weird. It's weird how sometimes you don't put your all into stuff that you want to do for yourself, but uh, sometimes, you know, if someone gives you that push, uh, you'll go even a little farther than you thought you would go. And, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I think if, if he told me to run through a wall, I think I would do it. If I told myself to run through a wall, I, I don't know if I would do it. It's just one of those things. And, um... Yeah, it's, uh, funny things seem to happen when you hang out with him. <laughs> uh, you know, podcasts, TV shows, uh, night watch radio. That's and, right. And the sky's the limit. <laughs> yeah, I have a friend like that. Yeah, yeah, you, you kind of do, don't <laughs> you, John? Do. Get you in trouble all the time. That, that, that sounds like Walt didn't want to answer that. Question. Yeah, Walt was passing that. He was like, "Ming, there's the bus, buddy. Get under it." <laughs> That's awesome. But, but you know what? You're absolutely right, and that's the thing. I, you know, Again, good answer, Ming, saving yourself any evil there on the backside. But i got to tell you, just watching the show, your adventures are so fun because y- you never know what you're going to get into, and he gives you those challenges. And one of my favorite challenges that you got was when he said, you guys, get rid of some of this junk, and he sent you guys to the swap and shop thing. That was absolutely insane. Yeah, I think uh, I, the, the flea market is definitely a different world. Um, something that Walt's been going to for a number of years and uh, um, something that uh, they podcasted about and, uh, you know, interviewed some of the interesting characters there. It's, it's something, uh, I think it's something we thought everybody should see and, uh, you know, try to experience. Well, it was quite an experience. Walt, you've been going there for years and you're still sane. I don't know how you do it. Uh, I think it's the only thing that, you know, that does keep you sane because you just see... Um, it's like going back in time. Uh, you know, there's no internet there. There's no, um, there's no like corporate signs as you walk under a, in, into a door. There's no pushy salesman. It's just people putting their wares on the table, and you know you can actually uh, negotiate for a price if you know if if the uh, person is willing. I think it's. Uh, I wish it was. I wish everything was a flea market. You know, it's it's really true uh, when you say it that way because a lot of people we know have really, you know, they've always been they've they've bought the DVDs and then the laser discs and the Blu-rays, but they still at heart love the VHS, and so they hit like flea markets coast to coast uh, to to get these VHS tapes. They've been they've been. I mean, some of these guys will drive for eleven hours. Some of our friends to get these VHS tapes, and I thought about that uh, when I saw that episode with the flea market because I was like, I bet you know, in addition to all these great things you can find. You can find treasures there, like these long lost, bizarre movies on VHS. Uh, yeah. I think, I think uh, if VHS is uh, is a, is a, the graveyard for VHS is the uh, VHS is the flea market because, I mean, you could spit in any direction and you'll hit a table with a VHS tape on it. I mean, not doesn't excite me so much because, you know, you buy one or two old VHSs and you quickly find out that they're all dry rotted and they jam up your VCR and. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> Yeah, I stay away from the VHSs, but I'm looking for anything else at a flea market other than a VHS. There you go. I, I kind of feel similar. There's some of the, my favorite movies still aren't on DVD, so I have to hold on to the VHS. And luckily, I've had it this whole time. I've taken good care of it, so I don't put it in and have flakes of <laughs> magnetics flying in every direction, because well, that's always a hate. You know what you could do? You could digitize it and turn it into a... Like a DVD. Gosh. Very nice. See there? <laughs> nice. I, 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 I'm... I'm surprised you kept the player. It's just, uh, you know, it got to a point where it was just taking up space in, uh, you know, the precious, con- you know, the precious entertainment system space. And, uh, yeah, I just, and one day I just chucked it. It was gathering dust. <laughs> I'm surprised uh, you still have the player. Yeah, I'm surprised too, but I, I do. It, well, since it's a combo, I, I kept it as a combo. It's a DVD recorder player with a Super VHS recorder player hooked into it they it's kind of got a combo thing and it's kind of good i do a lot of video editing so you never know you'll be surprised how many people come to you and go hey man i got this old super vhs stuff i really want to edit 
and you're just like, wow, you know, you got to pull that old monster out and hook it up and go. It kind of wow. surprises me. Well, I mean, yeah. in, the, in that case, I'll grab your address. Any VHS tapes I, I, I want to get rid of, I'll send your way. Uh, SVHS cables, I'll also send your way. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> there you go. I can take that. That'll work. That'll work. I have to ask, Walt, everyone, you know, here at the table, we're, we're fans of Cacophony, and we want to know, is there ever going to be a sequel in the works or another Batman story or anything like that coming down the road? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, it's, um, Kevin has written half of the sequel. I mean, there's still, I think he still has to pen three more and then, um, get them to me and then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see it. But, uh, yeah, it's, he's still got to write the, the last three issues. Are you working on anything else right now currently just on your own? Uh, I'm working on something, um, creator owned, um, that I'm going to uh, see if I can get off the ground. Um, but, yeah, that's been taking up most of my time lately. Now, you did a book with Brian, too, didn't you? Yes, Wardy yeah. Undead. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And we're going to be talking with Brian a little later, and we're going to bust his chops a little bit about his uh, exploits at that same flea market. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see, you know what? The one I remember the most is when they were, I think it was the comic convention you're coming back from. And you went to the garage right. sale and found the old Migos. Yes. Oh yeah! Oh, I was so jealous at that moment. I, I was, was like, too. "Oh no way!" Because <laughs> I'm still trying to put my old Migo collection together myself. So yeah, yeah, I was, I was going, "Yeah, what a find!" That now, see, that's what's great about the show is because we are living vicariously because we, you know, those of us that kind of identify with you guys so so deeply. We feel like, man, that was us. You know, we've done that. We've been there. Mm-hmm. And so to see that on a TV show and, to, and that you guys are, you know, sending that across the world, it really does warm our hearts a lot. Well, if you thought you saw Migos in season one, get ready for season two. Nice. Oh, yeah. man. That's, that, see, that's my soft spot. It's, it's uh, you know, Superman has kryptonite. I've got Migos. Yeah, minute, that's you know, me, me too. I think there's Migos on every episode in, in season two. Oh, yeah. Man. See, that's no, I'm awesome. Only I'm, I'm, no. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Don't do that to me. No. The best thing about your guys' show is we're watching it. And my wife will watch it with me now. And I'll be like, see, this stuff's cool. It's on TV now. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's like all of a sudden it's like, no, it's not really a geek fest. It's okay. Get off my back about the $6 million man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, has that, that convinced her? It has, it has in some ways. I some mean, days, yeah, yeah. Some some people kind of look at it now, and it, it's you. You guys have made it cool to be crazy like we are to go out there and lose our minds hunting down that elusive Thor helmet for the Mego figure. You yes, know? <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. I love you for it because honestly, uh, for for me, um, luckily my Mego collection is pretty close to complete nowadays. Johnny, I get to rub it in for a minute. Thanks. Yeah, th- and uh, that's you know it's it's largely in part to the fact that you know. Uh, like you guys said, you know, you go out and you find these things hidden someplace, and then you guys pass along that kind of stuff to people like myself. Come in the store and like, hey, look, there's that cool Thor Migo, and uh, and we can pick it up. And one of the things I like about what you guys do is, I mean, you're realistic. You know, you you don't overprice stuff. You buy stuff at, at a reasonable rate, even though sometimes the people you're buying from seem to think that they have gold. I mean, it's like they've brought in the lost ark. But uh, but but you guys know the fact. I mean, you're like, look, I can sell this for eighty, but I'm not going to be able to sell this for eight hundred. So get a break, you know. And I like that right. about the show. How does that feel though when you guys are there? And and I know it's it's hard because you got the cameras in your faces and things. But is do you feel pressure when people come in with this like item? Like for instance, I know Walter, you said the guy came in with like the six million dollar man. You're like, this is like the holy grail. I'll give you eighty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, definitely that, pressure because you know. I mean, it, if people, but people are coming in. You have to. They have to take into consideration the people bringing this stuff in. Um, they know what what it can go for if they sell it. You know, if they just were to do it by their own, you know, to sell it, list it, and sell it on their own, they could make, um, you know, far more than I can give them. So that that was that's always like um, a detriment to. Um, you know, uh, the comic book store. In a pawn, a pawn shop, it's a little different. I mean, you see all these pawn shows. But in a comic book store, most of the people bringing their stuff in, if it's really good and it's really valuable, I mean, a monkey can list it now and, and, and get the full price for it. There really isn't a need to bring the stuff into the store and sell it anymore. Uh, in, the, in today's age, you know, with, uh, you know, with online auctions and everything. 
But and then you factor in, though, that, like, you know, you you got to buy some things because if you're, if you're turning everybody down over and over and over again, you know, we'll, you need some transactions that are actually successful. So there's a little bit of pressure to buy some things. Not so much this year because, um, as it turned out last year, everything I bought, people would call from all over the country looking to see if I had it. You know, oh, nice. they saw it on TV that the night before, and then the next day, I'd be getting calls. You still got that poster. You still got that toy. <laughs> so consider, I didn't consider that the first time around. So this time around, I kind of I factored that in and was able to um, be a little looser with Kevin's money. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That is, you know, that is an interesting yeah. point, too, because I kind of wondered about that. I mean, some of the items that come on there, I mean, we know what they are and we start drooling over them instantly. But the people who would never think of this kind of thing, right? it's being raised every week. And you've got people who are seeing items maybe for the first time. Wow, I never knew that existed. Boom, they're on the phone with you and they're saying, hey, you know, get that. So you guys ship it to them, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we had the item still, um, most of the time, though, the, 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 the show aired months after you know that transaction took place the first time so i didn't have most of that stuff by the time it aired gotcha. um, i was you know i'd kick myself but this time you now we're we're we shot in the summertime i pretty much have all the stuff and um i held on to it you know with the show in mind this time because i was getting calls like i said from you know from other countries even of like do you still have that jack kirby thor poster i want it and um, so this time I uh, I played I factored that into my decision making on buying some of the stuff I bought this year. That's cool. This season, I mean. What What's the weirdest things that people have brought in? Ooh. Ming, you you feel that one? I think. Um, I I don't even know if I want to give anything away. Uh, you know, lately. Anything weird that hasn't been on the show? Yeah, that hasn't been on the show because we don't um, want to ruin anything for the yeah. fans. Oh, that hasn't been on the show. Oh yeah. God, um, it, it's probably safe to include season one. Just yeah, you could probably include two. season one, but not season two at all. Yeah. Probably no. Stanley's toenails <laughs> <laughs> uh, from a hotel. Uh, no, no, no body parts that I know of, or any any fluids or clippings that I don't Good. that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm sitting here letting them think about this, I want to say I think one of the reasons why you guys get so many people bringing things in, even though they know they could probably get more on eBay, is the convenience of it. They can bring it to you. They can get some quick cash. Maybe they're late on a car payment or something, or maybe they're moving or who knows what, and you guys just give them the cash quick. They don't have to wait. They don't have to deal with the the mail. Right. They don't, yeah, I think that's a big part of that it. That does happen, but usually that happens with items that you know that aren't really the, the really sought-after item. Yeah. You know, if you have a really like, if you have an amazing Fantasy Fifteen, you're not going to settle for what the comic book store is going to give you. You want you're going to try yeah. to uh, you're going to try to milk that and get as much of the for sale as you can get for yourself, which is understandable, and I totally understand that. Um, but it is a, it's a different. I mean, if this was if this show was on in 1990, forget about it. There was no there was no online auctions. I mean, this you there was no outlet for you to sell your stuff other than a comic book store. The world has changed, but um, hopefully not. Not you know, it, it's not changed too much where we can maybe go on for another year doing this. Well, yeah, we want to see you guys go on for a long time. We want this to be a successful series. Five years from now, we're going to be like seeing minglets running around, and we're going to have uh, this whole this minglets. Whole <laughs> minglets. <laughs> yeah. We're going to actually get to like get to you know follow them around in five years. We'll be like they'll be at the store. They'll be starting to work there. It'll be great. Oh, okay. We want to see them on season ten. We're in the Superman suit. <laughs> is what right, we want. That's right. <laughs> Oh, I hear you like the, the Honey Boo Boo spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still say Ming would be a great comic book. He needs his own comic book. I think. I think that's. I think Walt, you should. Uh, you should be the, doing the art, and we should have uh, the Ming comic. Uh, I spent yeah. a lot of time with the guy. I don't know if he really needs his own comic book. I don't know. If he'd be that. I don't know yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> None of us deserve our own comic book. Oh, I disagree. Yeah, maybe Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there are far more interesting stories out there, but I, I appreciate the thought. <laughs> well, your story's a good story, though, Ming. I mean, you basically, w- weren't you doing just some, some design work? You, like, started a fan site for, for Kevin, and the next thing you know, boom, you're in the universe. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I was a poor street urchin, and uh, <laughs> I on a computer, and uh, and uh, created a fan site for the movie Clerks back in uh, 1995, and uh, Kevin saw it at a local internet cafe, gave me a call, and, uh, you know, here I am. Uh, talking to you guys on Nightwatch Radio. 
See? Wow. See how great that is? It's it's the it's that it's that magical story. We need to like yeah. make I'll, a movie. I like the free plugs. I do too. That's <laughs> oh, yeah. great. That's that always works. That always works. Now, Walt, I got a question for you. What do you think about everything going on with hockey right now? Uh, oh, you know, I um, I get this a lot at the store. People always ask. Um, I still think with all my heart that they're both sides aren't um, insane enough to uh, cancel another season. Like I don't think that I think they both realize that, that you know there won't be much to come back to if they do that again. Um, so uh, in my I really got to think that they'll figure this out by the first of the year. I don't think you're going to have it in until January, though. Yeah, see, I was really bummed because we do not have an actual hockey team here in Kansas City. We've and had a couple, but they we, come and go. Yeah, yeah, but this year we always get, you know, the pregame, you know, and this year it was going to be great. Oh, you guys are in Kansas City? Yeah. 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 Well, you guys wanted to go. I mean, you guys have you guys been taking some flack lately, man. You guys are booing your quarterback for getting hurt. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, no. <laughs> I wasn't there. No. You, know, you weren't there? No, no, I don't no. believe you. See, I tell everyone I'm a hockey fan, so I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I spend most of my time in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for hockey to start. Yeah, that's what it is. And I tell you what, if they don't have hockey this year, I say just call up Kevin and the boys and just start a whole new league with them. Yeah, that's what well, I think. You know what? You, it's weird you say that. You watch Comic Book Men season two. You, if there's no hockey, we'll fill your uh, hockey your hockey uh, interest this year. That's all. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. You know, I have to give uh, credit also to AMC because uh, they had the uh, the awesome foresight to to pick up Comic Book Men in the first place and to make it a series. And and you know, they've been really on the cusp here lately with The Walking Dead, which is a huge hit. Mm-hmm. Comic Book Men's on the same night. It's like Nerd Paradise in one night. I really love it. And and I I think honestly that. Uh, that that's something that we need more of. We need more uh, networks that take chances and that mm-hmm. give people what they ask for. And so I have to commend AMC for that as well. And I have to commend you guys because uh, every week you make us all smile, you make us proud, and uh, and we wouldn't have it any other way, man. And we want you guys to be so successful. I want T-shirts. I want Mingasaurus <laughs> on a T-shirt. I want the whole thing going on. If it makes you guys feel any better, in my shop I have posters of comic book men. Yes, we do. Oh, it's great. It's great. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for yeah, that's yeah, very nice to hear. Well, yeah, we promote it everywhere we can, and you oh, know, yeah. and even during the season, we want to bring you guys back on about halfway through and talk some more about it, and just you know, definitely. And well, we got to have a werewolf by night evening, just talking about Jack Russell for like an hour. I think we could do it. You say uh, that I while you're wearing it. your shirt. I am. I'm wearing Werewolf <laughs> by Night on my chest right now. It's a Tuma <laughs> Dracula shirt, guest starring Werewolf by Night, of course. So, uh, you, you know. What issue I could, was that? I can I can I, I could definitely squeeze an hour of conversation about that book. You know that would be easy. Heck yeah! It's 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 actually issue eighteen, Johnny. Tomb of uh, Dracula, is issue true. eighteen, guest starring the Werewolf by Night, and uh, and it's that's some the good reads. It. it is it's a good read. Not my favorite, but it's good read. You don't know what you're talking about. You said not my favorite, so now I must hit you with a lifesaver. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> terrible. Sorry, I'm, terrible. I'm, a, I'm a Roy Thomas fan. I'm sorry. I know you don't have any taste. It's good, though. It's good. <laughs> it's all good. Wow. Because comic, books rule. comic books rule. I want to thank you guys again for taking time out, coming on the show tonight. I, uh, you guys really, really are awesome, and, uh, and we love being there with you every week. And thank you for the adventures, man. Thank you for the good times. Thanks for having us on. Definitely. Yeah, thank you guys very much. Hey, and now, Ming, you're part of the family, too, man. Anytime you want to come on and promote anything at all, uh, you know, let's get you on the show, man, because that's what it's all about. You guys are part of the Night Watch family. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, I know you're talking to Mike Zastic later. Uh, we do have a little podcast called I Sell Comics uh, that comes up uh, out every Thursday on the uh, Kevin Smodcast Radio Network. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Very nice. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, Walt, what about you? you gotta, you got to give some promotion while you're here, buddy. Uh, nah. See, Walt's <laughs> like me. He is just like me. <laughs> he, is. he does not do self-promotion at all. Man. and that's you got to respect that, though. I yeah. respect it, but... I got to ask you though, because since you won't do it, let's talk about you. You've got your own uh, podcast as well. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's not my own. Well, part of one, yes. Yes. So tell us about that. <laughs> uh, tell, did you guys listen to it? Uh, I have. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so it's you know it's me and Brian and uh, and Impractical Jokers, uh, Brian Quinn, uh, True TV's Impractical Jokers, uh, yep. and Brian Quinn. Um, we do it weekly. Um, 
And I mean, the format is uh, pretty loose. We all talk about anything um, that just happens to be on the, you know, on top of our heads that, that particular week. It's true. It's kind of like uh, taking on the topics of the day, so to speak. Right. And yeah, you guys do a great job of it. And in addition oh, to, you. you know, the yeah. wonderful smodcast that you do with Kevin uh, every week, it's wonderful. And uh, I urge everyone to go out there and listen to it. It's real easy to find. Just look up Smodcast on Google. Go to the website. It's everywhere. You can't oh, yeah. miss it. I mean, you guys are blanketing the world with your awesome medianess. <laughs> <laughs> What's next to conquer? I mean, gosh, you've conquered comics, you've conquer, conquered TV and radio. I can only imagine. What's Comic coming. book men, uh, the movie. Okay. That's I right. I realized That's this what is what it felt like to conquer something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys are doing it. You guys are, you guys are on it. I'm proud. I'm proud. It's true. We want the movie to come next. We want the movie. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, we're on it. Good, good. Thank yeah. you guys again. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. And you know what? We've seen some of them, and it's been on your show. that is awesome thank you again guys you have a wonderful evening Ming good talking to you for the first time and Walt good talking to you again my friend All right, man thank you you too we'll talk to you guys soon Uh, good night good night good night night. thank you wow guys comic book man right here Uh, the second half like he said we're going to have Brian and Michael on the second half we'll be be talking to them about some of the crazy stuff they've been doing we're going to Give uh, give Brian a couple of what fours? <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> I, I, oh no, you're not. He is awesome. Uh, he is. Uh, he makes me laugh so hard. Rock the boat, don't rock the boat, baby. What? Rock the boat, don't so, tip the boat over. Uh, the end of the first half is going to be just as crazy. <laughs> Probably it always is. It always is, man. Man, that time went by quick, though. It does go by. I was going to. I was going to keep him a little bit longer, but I know we're we're rolling. We're we're moving forward. Here. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one of our number one uh, listening bases is in Australia, of all yep. places. Uh, number one overnights there on the weekends, and uh, we're doing real well in Australia. And so we have friends own. there that go out in graveyards and listen to this show as a group in, in a graveyard. That is awesome. Every week. <laughs> and I think that is fantastic. So we got people to back me up on what I'm saying as well. Yeah, what we're going to have a party here I'll on the letters. 30th. Yeah, the 30th is going to be a big day here. What are you like, going to be, Todd? I'm 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 hooking up to Batman, man. I'm I'm glad you're breaking out. You I'm know? breaking out of the mold. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm different. I'm glad you're doing something you know way crazy. I would be a pirate, but hell, I wear that all the time. So yeah. what about Wonder Woman or something like? Hugh, you really want to <laughs> see me in a so Wonder Woman funny. costume, dude? <laughs> Golly. Really, dude? That's good stuff. Wow. What about Hugh? That's going to be the next. Dark in the show. city, night is a wire. Jews dawn. Steam in the subway, earth is a fire. <laughs> I'm going to be wearing Jimmy Star clothes on Halloween, ladies and gentlemen. I don't have any. <laughs> she still doesn't have any. Woman, you want me? Give me a sign. Because I'm wearing Jimmy Star. And catch my I'm breathing gone. even closer behind. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Oh, do, yeah. Do, do. Jimmy Star, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Shout out to Jimmy Starr, one of our sponsors here on the network, as well as the always fantastic uh, Brian with a Y, David, nice. who's also one of our sponsors. And last but certainly not least, Renegade Arts. Renegade Arts, ladies and gentlemen, Doug Bradley's Spine Chillers. And this Ooh. is the perfect time of year to go and pick up some Spine Chillers. And oh, we yeah. have, let's if everything works out, our Halloween special is going to be extra special Thanks to Renegade Arts. That's all I can say about it right now because we're just putting the final finishing touches on it. It's just terrible. Just terrible. We're nuts around here. That is true. <laughs> There's Tweaky, but Tweaky's not here, and neither is Chris Weisbach. Chris oh, has been man. abducted once again, ladies and gentlemen. They really love him. You know, I'm starting <laughs> to really get concerned about this. Uh, one yeah. week, you know, it's it's Hugh. The next week, it's Chris. I mean, He's one of the two. stolen by the witch. But somebody's drinking UFOs. tonight, right? Someone is definitely drinking Somebody tonight. Somebody is drinking tonight. Yeah, now. vodka, I believe, is the uh, is, Chris is that the game? choice. For, for I know Scotch is for Hugh. And I don't know. I think vodka might be for uh, Chris. Chris? But I, it's, uh, I hope he's happy wherever he might be with those aliens getting everyone in Germany drunk tonight. It's just uh, not Sometimes necessary. there's a man. And I'm talking about the dude here. The Chris here. <laughs> Sometimes there's a man. Well, he's the man for his time and place. Uh-huh. Yep. He fits right in there. And that's the dude oh. in Los Angeles. That's right. Wow. Dude, That's right. Chris. Chris, it's not the same without you, you crazy rat. Because, man, all we want to do is party, Chris. 
All we're asking for you to do is show up and throw down. Man, Foodie done did it again. Uh. Oh. Chicks dig me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why am I here? Chicks dig me. Cook, cook, cook. Chris, Chris, Chris Weisbach. Chicks dig me. Chicks dig me. Chris, Chris, Chris Weisbach. I rarely wear underwear. Nipple. Capital. Chicks dig me. Sepatow. My brother. What a time. What do you think? Oh, he's so sexy. He's so sexy. Nipple. Yeah, baby. All right. That's for Chris. We need to call an ambulance. Oh, yeah. I think Todd had a seizure. <laughs> Chris. And uh, we're going to go to break. We are going to go to break here on Night Watch. Chris, we miss you. Get your butt back here. Get away from the UFOs. Uh, we will be back. Uh, I don't even know. Are you going to be able to go to break? Do you have this thing know. ready to rock? I'm still dialing 911 from your big seizure. You Did just you had. just say get your butt away from the UFOs? Yes, yes. Get your butt away from the UFOs. Wow. I think he's addicted to probes. Might as well. Oh, oh, addicted oh, to probes. Sugar. Yeah, that's what he needs. Go you're going to have to face it. You're addicted to probes. Oh, <laughs> oh my the goodness. Probes. All right, now everybody's saying. There we go. Yeah. Well, we're going to break now. Stick with us because comic book men are coming back with us. We got Brian and Mike coming up next, and it's going to be really fun. I'm, you know what? I appoint you minister of girly things that I don't understand. That's right. That's right. Uh, I must not understand how to dial a phone, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. You know what? Hey, it's new. It's now. It's what the public wants. <laughs> <laughs> Night watch. Anything Todd wants. That's wants right. me to run through a wall? I'll run through a wall. That's right. That's no, right. It's That's not right. gonna go that far. Hold on. Who says it's not going that far? Oh, oh yeah. You know, it's not hard to understand. And I'm gonna play this for you just so you get I think it. This okay. This is one of the traits of a really good producer. Keep the talent happy. That's right. That's right. So we're going to break. We'll be back after this. See you later. Hey, this is Brian O'Halloran. You might know me from such films as Clerks, Clerks 2, Vulgar, Brutal Massacre. Yeah, anyway, I'm not even supposed to be here tonight. But you know what? You are, because you're listening to The Night Watch.
back to Nightwatch. Mm. Yoda. And this is and listening to Nightwatch you are and will continue to do. Foreseen it. I have. Yeah. Welcome back to Night Watch with your hosts, Todd Sheets, Chris Weisbach, and Hugh McClanahan. And welcome back to Night Watch. I'm your host, as always, Todd Sheets, here with Johnny Reed. Greetings. And Hugh McClanahan. Second. <laughs> <laughs> we did that on purpose. Good evening. Oh. Welcome back to the second half of the show. I'm very excited to be here. That first half was phenomenal. We had the always fantastic Ming Chen and our good buddy Walt Flanagan here uh, talking about Comic Book Man. In the second half, we're going to keep on rolling. Um, you know, I, I, I was very excited. Originally, we were going to have Brian Johnson here with Mike. Um, and uh, I, something happened to Brian. From what I understand, Ming did not want to be upstage, so he went over there and put the Chuck Norris down. On Brian Johnson during that uh, during the break, he went over. Is that there what it was? Yeah, he did like some kind of a triple side flip kick thing. And I know when we a, called, I heard br- things breaking in the background. Right, right, and he. I think part of it was his infuriation with Amanda for thinking he was an herbal tea. But now <laughs> <laughs> the truth is out, and uh, you better watch yourself. Ming Chin will whoop you down, and uh, it'll happen, dude. You don't I'm even want to mess with him. I'm he in is, protective custody. They're working on the action figure for him as we speak. That's right. That's right. But we do have the always wonderful. Michael Zapsik here with us from Comic Book Men. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you, folks. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you here, man. And when I say that, that's no BS. We've been fans of the show since it started. Uh, I was a, a huge, uh, uh, it just blew me away the first episode. Uh, it's always hard when you guys are out there and you're doing this for the first time, I know, and you do the show and then you've got message boards flying out there, forums, people are loving you or hating you or whatever. But I'm telling you, forget about anyone who doesn't have taste. Your show rocks. You are. You guys are too kind. All of you, too kind. Thank you. We're too kind. You know, and Amanda's we, we kinda, not. She's she's not kind. Just ignore. She's not even well, listening. You know, that's, <laughs> that's your problem. <laughs> I know, that's your problem, guys. But uh, I'll I'll tell you. You know what? Uh, that is so true. People love you or they they hate you. And did you did you ever notice that the the most vocal ones are the ones that hate you? Oh, yeah. always. Yeah, and they're the ones it's that watch great. the show nine times in a row just to, to examine every line of dialogue so they can be sure to quote you exact. Oh, my goodness, yeah, and to try and catch it in a flub. <laughs> like, oh, no, you kidding me? Action Comics wasn't, no, it's not going for $2.5 million. Are you crazy? Yeah, uh, it's yeah. Going, I get that all the time. It's going for 2.5.1. One. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. What's wrong with you? Well, that's that's the geek mentality. That's that's our nerd is coming out, you know? <laughs> I am proud to be a nerd, but I have to admit yeah. I am I you know what? Uh, there are there's like a almost a different kind of contingent, I think. She got the nerds who embrace everything we love, and when we find like-minded people like on television or whatever, we embrace you guys and we are proud of you and we we call you brothers. And then you got the kind that are what I call the elitists, the guys that y- you, you go into a comic shop and you just want to slap them in the face because they're discussing oh, yeah. what material the heel of Superman's boot is made of. And if you disagree with them, you are a SOB. And then they want to talk trash and they're jealous of what you're accomplishing. So then all of a sudden, you're a jerk. But you know what? We're the first class. We love you. We embrace you. And to hell with those other guys because there's something really wrong. They need to get out of mama's basement and get on with their lives. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, you know what? I, I like to think of myself and uh, actually Walt, the, you know, the, the king nerd, um, you know, in that <laughs> we, I like to think of us in that strata where, you know, we're accepting of people and their, their geekdom, no matter what it is. You know, there, there are people who come in who are like Doctor Who fans. Yep. And I personally, I, I tried to get into Doctor Who, but you're talking like 50 years worth of uh, backstory right there. Yep. And it's a little daunting. <laughs> and half of it bur- has been destroyed where you can't yeah. even go back 
to see the back part of it. Yeah. Exactly. What would they think? Yeah. You know what? <laughs> was was videotape really that expensive? I mean, you had to go back and, and just tape over the stuff? Uh, yeah. Uh, that They're is killing nuts. Me. That, and Hugh here is a big, he's from Scotland, and he grew up with Doctor Who. He just loves him. Am I right, Hugh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so did you get to see some of those old episodes when they originally aired as a kid, or did well, you never get to see them? I mean, they were, they were being made even before I was born. That's so. true. That's true. You're not quite 752 no. No. yet. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But of course, Tom Baker was my favorite. Mine too. Yeah. They recently put out, just so I can talk nerd for a moment, they recently put out the Mego version of Tom Baker that we all wanted as kids. You know, we had our Mego Batman, our Mego Spider-Man, oh, yeah. and our Mego Green... Got the Green Arrow. Right. And now, yeah, we got the Green Arrow. They've, they've recently made a, a Mego version, kind of, of the Green Lantern just recently. But, yeah, they, they now they have the Mego Tom Baker. Oh, yeah. So that's real nice to go along with our Mego Battlestar Galactica guys. <laughs> now, do you guys still play with them? And are you able to, to actually sit down and do, like, an hour-long play session with your Mego Doctor Who? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't play with toys. I, I have an eight-year-old son that I have to play with him with them. That, well, then you, you still do. So you're living vicariously. <laughs> Good for you. I do the same thing with my Justice League Unlimited. I'm sorry, my son's uh, Justice League Unlimited. <laughs> exactly. That's it, yeah. As a matter of fact, right now I'm looking at my uh, some of my Justice League figures that are sitting here in the studio, and, and they definitely get their, their love and play. We, oh, we yeah. take good care of them. That's for sure. That's good. I actually open my stuff. There yeah, you go. I that's, mean, that's that's the big difference. You got to do that, man. You got to do that. Yeah. You know, well, you got to you got to buy one for opening, and you keep one in in the closet. That's that's the true geek way. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. At Johnny, this point, <laughs> garage of doom. I'm not going to say a word. But no, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to tell you guys where to start looking. If you ever, you know, do a little B and E on my house. So. <laughs> well, gosh. I actually hate those guys. Those hoarder guys that like get like ninety Batmobiles and stash them and put them in on the eBay. I hate that. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, no. Yeah, those. Well, they're the evil. They're they are true <laughs> and and proper evil. They're they're satanic. Is Thank what you. They I are. agree. Those guys who who go into Toys R Us and just buy all the the really cool figures. And then they end up on eBay. They should do what I used to do and, and go buy all the really cool figures and sell them at Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash. <laughs> that, that's right. That's <laughs> nice. right. That's the only way to fly. That's right. <laughs> I have to tell you, man, honestly, it, it is one of those things for me personally where I, I love the fact that they're bringing back some of this stuff, like the Kiss figures from my childhood, and they're bringing those back and redoing them. Uh, you know, they, they've remastered them from the original molds mm -hmm. for today's audiences. Because let's face it, some of those old ones. You know, they start getting aged a little bit, and some of that Mego stuff, the rubber bands start getting aged. You don't want to swing Tarzan. Start turning, turning green. You don't want to have Gene Simmons doing cool <laughs> flips whenever you know his leg's going to fly off. So it's much better that they make some nowadays so we can do flips with the new version uh, and then put our older ones in the cool display case and right. say, yeah, I'm rocking are, 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 Is this like cloning? Are you, is that what you're suggesting? We clone Gene Simmons because he's getting a little long in the tooth. <laughs> you can't do those backflips anymore. So let's get the new version of Gene Simmons in. That's right. Which that's is right. Nick Simmons. And they, and they well, actually, they have the uh, they they have cloned them. Those uh, the same molds they found of the Migos, and they put that them out true. again. They did. They just you know, re released I, them. I did see those. I saw them, and I'm very excited about that too. They're that from the nice. what, the first album, aren't they? Yeah. Well, no, these are from the Love Gun album, but they're gonna they're just now. Getting I ready saw to that do they're them. doing the eight inch and they're doing the twelve. Yeah, they're doing really both. Nice. Yeah, it's really nice stuff. I love. I that. only saw the eight inch, but they're doing twelve too. Yeah, they're doing are they twelve the fist too. Fighting kiss. Yep, yep, yep. Good stuff, man. Awesome. Good stuff. That's the way to fly. See, this is what it's about, man. This is why I love your show is because we are brothers. We can talk about the craziest stuff, and it's the greatest thing in the world. And that's why every week. We're sitting in front of the TV when you're on, and we're experiencing this with you. We're on the adventure with you, and we feel so good because we can identify with you, and that's something that we love. Well, that's so cool. Uh, guess what? You get to do it 16 times this year. Yes. Oh, that is awesome. Woo! Yay. And I, while I'm sure Ming was like, was Ming a little chatty before? Ming's always chatty. Well, we he? love him. We love Ming. Yeah, but what, was, he, was he a little, uh, here's, here's what you can expect from this season. I know Walt. Walt probably you had to drag you had to drag a hello out of Walt. No, no, never. Here's the thing. See, Walt and I are brothers in the Werewolf by Night. So the minute <laughs> Walt comes on, we get talking, and it's it. We don't even have to. Okay, drag. 
Uh, you, uh, you've got his kryptonite then. <laughs> All you have to do, you, you just start talking uh, werewolf by night, and the man melts. That's a- yeah. <laughs> and, okay, Wait. Ming. All you have to do is say hello. Oh, are you one of the comic book men? And you can't shut him up for like three, four hours. <laughs> Every time we go to podcast, that's what I do. Hey, Ming, you realize you're you're one of the comic book men, and then boom, he's off to the races. <laughs> do you turn him down I, I'm a lot? Short of two hours of nonstop verbal, <laughs> verbal mingness. Yeah. That's what we'll verbal get. mingness. Yes, well, Not verbal that, can't verbal mingness. Hugh, did you have something over there? No, I was just going to say we we didn't try to extract any season two information. No, we're so. trying to keep that on the download because I don't want any spoilers myself, and <clears> so we're just going to keep the season two stuff on a little bit of the download. But I got to tell you. I am so stoked that I want to come in and go, all right, tell me everything, tell me everything, but oh, I yeah. don't because I don't want any, any little <laughs> bit of it ruined. You know, I just, I, I I'm can't not wait. going to, but I will tell you this. You're going to see some, uh, some weirdness. You're going to see a lot of, um, you're going to see some, some angry faces, a lot of, a lot of anger. <laughs> it, it, it's actually quite awesome. <laughs> I love to hear that. By the way, I just love it. That's that's very uh, and nice. not and this time around, not just from Johnson. Oh, really? Wow. wow. Yeah. I wonder how he's going to feel about the Ming boot to the head that he got before he was supposed to come on the show tonight. I just don't understand how that happened so quickly. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Ming's Ming's a. Uh, I don't know. He might have him tied up in his his basement right now. I think you're right. I think that would be for another show. Yeah. We, we need to yeah, talk true, about that. But, you know, and Johnson won't complain because he's used to basement. So. Oh. <laughs> I was getting the biggest kick out of him at the flea market episode when he's in there and he's just like ruthless, man. And everybody else is playing nice. And here's Brian just ripping it down. No, no. He's, he's a pretty ruthless cat. Um, <laughs> but I'll tell you, all that stuff, none of that stuff was manufactured. Because a lot of people came on and were like, you know what, that was such bull crap and blah, blah, blah. No, no, Brian actually started smashing plates. And that dude walked over to um, one of our guys, Jerry Carita. Uh, he, he was um, like, a, uh, basically he was a field director. So he's out there and the cameras are rolling. Guy walks up to him, the, the guy who actually confronted Brian, walks up to Jerry and says, why is that guy doing that? He, why is he being mean to that little guy? And uh, he's from Texas, and he's a biker, and he, he rode with the Hell of Angels. And he's like, I, I don't cotton to that. He's like, and Jerry looks at him and says, why are you telling me? Go tell him. <laughs> so he did. He walked right in camera and just started. Uh, they had the boom mic him, and he's like, dude, you don't do that. You don't do that ever. And, I mean, you, you saw that. That was all that was all right there. I like turned around and just walked away because I was <laughs> laughing so hard <laughs> to watch Brian get slapped down by somebody else was amazing. <laughs> and there's a little codicil to that, a little, uh, little PS. The guy comes in about three months ago when we're in the middle of doing season two where, while we're filming, and he just wanted to check in on Ming to make sure that the big guy didn't come down too hard on him. <laughs> <laughs> that is so And fun. also to sell me all of his Buffy and Angel stuff that he got tired of selling down at um, Collingswood. So he's like, mm. nah, I'm, I'm done. I'm not going down there no more. Thank <laughs> you. That, that brings me up to a question. What was your favorite season one episode? The favorite episode? Uh you know what? When Ming and I were uh, selling the the uh, giant size X Men and Incredible Hulk, that was really cool because that we weren't really sure if they were gonna to uh, to buy that buy those uh, issues right. that couple. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun because it, the it's always the art of the deal. It's always the um, <laughs> you know making that sale, gotcha, or getting it for the getting something in for the price you want it. Because I, I don't, I, I'm even worse than Walt. I don't like to spend Kevin's money. <laughs> the, the one criticism that I see all the time on the message boards, and I, I try not to go anywhere on message boards. You know, those people who do go, Google searches of themselves, I will never do that again. And I'll tell you uh, that originally I did. When uh, season one first came out, I was, you know, I had that Google alert, Michael Zapsick, blah, blah, blah. And I would get multiple hits of like, why is this guy on TV? What the hell? He's ripping people off. And it still comes up. You know, you're, 
what what are you people doing? You know, you say it's worth five hundred dollars, and you're only giving the guy like a hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, what's wrong with you? And we will not pay retail for a comic book that comes in because you have to make money. Yeah, you have mm-hmm. to sell it. Yeah, yep. I mean, and I got to tell you, realistically, a lot of people don't realize you may see something listed for twelve hundred dollars in a price guide, but I have a removable mask Batman from the Mego line, and I did not give twelve hundred dollars for it. It's like Donald Trump was there one day, and he goes, "Hey, I really like that Batman. Here's a thousand dollars." And so then suddenly it's in the price guide is a thousand dollars, but realistically, it's not going to go for a thousand dollars. Exactly. That's, yeah. you know, it's what the market is willing to bear, you know, but we, you know, if someone comes in and says, I've got a lot of comic books that I want to get rid of, you need 500 bucks now. And you bring me in like, uh, you know, two or $3,000 worth of comic books. You might walk out with $500. Yeah. yeah I mean, cause yeah. that's just the reality of, of commerce. It is. It is. And that's one of the things, you know, Johnny here owns a comic store. It's an independent, you know, store, and he struggles day and night with the same thing because you have to be able to sell it to someone who is like me. If I walked in there and you guys had Six Million Dollar Man, the Holy Grail, by the way, that was worth $80. $80. And if I, uh, <laughs> I love that part. It's a Holy Grail. I'll give you 80 bucks. I wish I could buy the Holy Grail. For 80 yeah. bucks. But uh, if I walked in there and you guys had that item that you just bought for 80 and you were selling it for, say, 100 and I'm like, I could afford that. But if you turned around and tried to sell it to me for 350 I couldn't afford that because I work for a living. And it, let's be realistic, in today's economy, we got to be able to still enjoy our hobby but still eat and put gas exactly. in the car. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's why I like your show so much because it's mm-hmm. an inspiration for people like Johnny who have a comic book store. And it's also an inspiration for people like myself who who – love the stuff that you're buying and know that we can come to a place and get it at a fair price. You know, that's, that is the other thing that, that, um, you know, one of Walt's first tenants, uh, when, uh, I wouldn't say training me, but like when I was following his lead and, you know, many of my sales tac- sales tactics are the same as Walt's because, you know, you stand next to a guy for 12 years, you pick up things. <laughs> you know, you, you, you start to, to bounce off each other. And um, you know what? We, we don't gouge. We nope. try not to gouge mm-hmm. people. Uh, we got that. <laughs> we did. We got a $6 million man for a reasonable price. And then we went and um, it took a little while, but we did sell it and we sold it at a fair price. That's right. right. Yeah. What I like about your show is how real it is. Because I couldn't tell you how many people come in and they, I have spawn number one or all five X-Men number ones, which everyone has 20 million copies of. <laughs> of course. You know, and they're like, like what I, do you mean it's not worth $100? <laughs> yeah, and it's like it's your fault. Yeah, yeah. exactly. What's wrong with you, Johnny? Why aren't you giving me $100 for these? Exactly. <laughs> it's because there, there are like 80 copies of each one of those in my nickel box over there. That's right. Yeah. Or the box that I, I'm, I'm taking out to you know, to give out to the, the neighborhood kids for Halloween instead of candy. Or what about the ones that bring yeah. you these, these books that are signed and uh, you can't even tell if it's, I mean, sometimes those signatures are like so fast, like McFarlane's sitting there and he's trying to fire off three yeah. million signatures in an hour. He's got a line of people. And I happen to have a couple of Spawn toys that are autographed that I keep because I met Todd and I really like having the toys mm-hmm. autographed. It's just neat. But if I ever tried to sell them, you couldn't tell if that was really Todd or not because it's just oh. like a scriggle, scriggle line. That's it. Exactly. And it, there's, um, you got to have either a COA. And this to your listeners out there, uh, if you ever go to a comic book con or an in-store signing, basically what you want to do is if they don't offer you a certificate of authenticity, which is key, uh, get, get your picture taken with the book and the guy signing it. Yep. That can act as your COA. Exactly. Yep. Now, I'm, uh, I don't know if you've read the New York Times. There was an article about Stan Lee being on the show. So it's kind of, there's, there's a spoiler out there that's very large, the New York Times. We will not read it. Uh-uh. Okay, good for you. But no, uh, I actually got Stan Lee to sign a uh, thing for me. I, I'm, I'm not an autograph guy either, but... I bought one of the Captain America, and Johnny, you'll love this, the, the Captain America metal shields that they've been putting out. Oh, yeah. We have one right here he, in the studio. Yeah, yeah I have one, beautiful. too. Yeah. He signed it for me. Nice. And you know what? And I'm, don't interrupt the man. Sorry. Speak. All right, oh, sorry. no, 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 no. I was, I was going to say, you know, 
this, but this is like a one of a kind piece. And I think I can get some backing up here that it's an authentic, you know, signature by Stan Lee. Cause, uh, you know, I got it on videotape. So there you go. There you go. That'll help. Yeah. But you'll never really sell it. I mean, you can talk about it, but the truth oh, of the matter God, is, no. you know, if you even, if even anyone even came close enough to it to breathe on it, you're going to cry. We know how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, can you imagine having, honest, to, to this day, if I could have had, like, Bob Kane sign one of my Batman cowls or something, do you know that not only would it have, like, have alarm systems on it, if anyone even got close enough to breathe near it, I'd be like, ah, ah get away, Bob Kane. <laughs> yeah. You know, and the only other person I could think of that way, other than Bob Kane, would probably be Stan Lee, you know? Right. Absolutely. Because I'm the Bob Kane. He's my, he, I mean, he, I just fall at the altar of Bob. He's <laughs> just, Bob. Uh, what's your favorite you know, comic book series, Michael? My favorite comic book series? Of all time, you mean? Yep. Of, yes, of all time. Okay, every waking moment of my day. Uh, I would have to go with uh, the Chris Claremont, John Byrne, X-Men. Wow, wow. John Byrne, though. Yeah. yeah I mean, come on. I love John Byrne. Yeah, I do, I'm, too. I'm a huge Byrne head. Yeah, me too. Me I, too. I, I think that his X-Men is, they're still pulling stuff out of that. And um, after he left, the X Men got a little um, got a little funky, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. it did. I, I quit reading it because there were so many crossovers on crossovers on crossovers that I was like, you know what? I'm done needing to buy 15 comics a week just to keep up with the X Men. I was done. Now, right. see, I've been reading them all along. So I, I know mean, I've have. been reading them since like issue. But after like the X Factor crossover stuff, I was done. After that, I was like, that's yeah, just too. Com- I didn't even know where I was anymore or who anybody was. It was complicated I- and. Yeah, understand convoluted, yeah. and um, I don't know if any of your listeners know this, but there was once a time when there was only one X Men book. That's true, uncanny. Yeah, yeah, it was, and it wasn't even uncanny until one forty one. That's, that's right. true. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, just X Men. So, uh, I mean, yeah, Days of Future Past. That was it. Became uncanny, and then you're like, wow, this is great, uncanny X Men, and it was great. But uh, yeah. it just really weird that um, all the stuff that that's around now is stuff that uh, came from back then. It's true. Everything is like an offshoot. And the thing I love about people like John Byrne and, and even, you know, we go to the John Buscema, Sal Buscema. Mm-hmm. I loved oh, both of Sal. them. Oh, amazing work. And, you know, Sal's kind of underrated, and I don't understand why, because I think some of the work Sal has done, and he always got the weird books like Rom Space Knight, but he did these incredible <laughs> things, and suddenly yeah. I'm like, wow, I'm buying this book based on a Mattel toy, Every single week or ideal or whoever put out ROM. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I just couldn't, you know, every month I was like right there. This, he turned this, the, the writers and the art really sucked you in. We were talking about Micronauts the other day and how right. Pat Broderick was such an amazing artist on that. And how oh, yeah. they took Amigo Toy and made this incredible series out of it. Can you, mm-hmm. I mean, they just yeah, don't. They, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, they lasted longer than Migo did, for God's sake. Yeah. I know, I know. And the weird thing is, it's almost like... The comics today, and I'm not trying to put anyone down, but it seems like it's always about reinvention or killing someone or doing some stupid thing or changing the universe that you've grown up loving for, you know... The, it's the, event. And back then it was just about, you know, here's Conan and he's taking on another dragon. And you know what? We loved it. Every week, if he fought a new dragon, we didn't care because we loved the stories. We loved the characters. We loved how they took something that at first seemed like, oh my God, they're doing a comic book on a toy? No way. And it turned out to be something just incredible because the imagination they used and today i just get frustrated because i'm like really why do we need to 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 horn in politics and why do we need to horn in all these things that really are not making my comic experience very good bruce wayne going through time really i don't even understand what's going on anymore how could you even the height of batman's popularity the dark knight's number one movie ever of all time and they kill the character off i mean what in the hell is wrong with these guys well let me ask you a question i mean Think about, and, and I'm going to slag Marvel for about five minutes here, because it's pretty much they are the, the prime um, violators, in my opinion, um, of you know, taking what was our childhood and like screwing it up. <laughs> um, and it, I hope that none of your listeners are, are like big, like, don't do it, don't tell me about ABX, but ABX. Do you, do you remember when they were hyping it right, right at the beginning? Oh, yeah. And they were like, Avengers versus X-Men. First time this has ever been done. Since last year. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I hate to tell you, there was an Avengers versus the X-Men. 
um, back in the 80s. And uh, I, you can even go to, you know, X-Men number nine, where they had to fight off who? The Avengers. So Xavier could, you know, fight Lucifer or whoever the hell he was fighting. Actually, it was Lucifer. Yeah, so, yes. I mean, it's not the first time that they've crossed paths. And, I mean, what was done, there, I mean, there were, pardon my French, but there were, there were like, jerk moves on, on both sides. Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, Scott was a jerk and Steve Rogers was a jerk. Oh, I agree. So, I mean, neither one of them are, are innocent in this. And at the end, you know, um, you know, one guy's just sitting there and getting a lecture from another guy. It's like, shut up, you. <laughs> and for me, I was just like, I'm done. I'm, I'm not going to read another one of these really stupid crossovers where it's like a big mega event. Uh, and I got to tell you, I think you said the key word, the event, right there. Because the problem yeah. I'm having with Marvel is that they make these great landscapes like Civil War, the world without mutants, and they never play in the landscapes because they're too busy creating the next one. Yeah. Right. Well, did you enjoy Civil War? Because this is part of my, the five-minute flag on Marvel. Because um, Mark Miller, a lot of people, and I'm going to make so many enemies, people are like, I knew that comic book man was a jerk. <laughs> um, Mark Miller, in my opinion, if, and I, have, I have only read two or three things of his that I've gotten behind. You know, gotten behind and, and been like, this is really good. Because most of it is misogynistic and mean-spirited. Yeah, the Ultimates, perfect yeah. example. The Ultimates. He took something that really wasn't even supposed to be done. Henry Pym, and I'm not excusing H Hank Pym. Uh, he smacked the wasp once. Right. It was, and that wasn't even an accident. Uh, I, I think Jim Shooter like uh, told Bob Hall that he wanted Hank to push her away, but he uh, mis misread something in the script, and so um, it had Hank slapping her. Oh, right, and but Shooter let it stand because uh, he thought it made an emotional like underscore. Right. Yeah. How it, many people wanted that to be redone when they did the whole alien invasion in the scrolls? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they they wanted Hank to be you know hey make Hank not have smacked or make him be that a scroll guy. Yeah. But turns out it wasn't, and it it you know it's something that happens, and it's something that that Hank Pym had to live with, right? Right. All right, now go to the Ultimate Universe. Hank Pym is a Zoloft popping uh, wife beater. I mean, he he beat her so badly that she was in the hospital. Yeah, right. And I'm not saying that it doesn't happen in real life because obviously it does. But here's a guy who's supposed to be a hero, right? And you're you're supposed to hold him to a higher um, to a higher level, and he. It, it just it seemed like Mark Miller was making light of the whole situation and just, like, turning it into this, and again, an event. Right. You know, like, here's, here's Hank Pym, who's, who's a white-beating, uh, he's got, you know, self-esteem problems and yada, yada, yada. And then you got um, Captain America going in there, kicking his ass, telling him that he needs, he, he said, Hank, grow, because I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> yep. You know, and, and you're like, oh, my God, this is, it's it's just very mean spirited, and you're taking that one. I mean, yeah, Hanks had his identity crisis crises before, but I mean, he's been a really cool character for, <coughs> pardon me, you know, nigh on forty years in the Marvel universe. Yep. Right. So to just like to, to just turn him into something that you know, not really that um, worthy of looking up to. Exactly. It's, just, it's it's lazy writing. I agree, and this is what we have to say to Marvel. We're going to say this just for you. You should be ashamed of yourself for even thinking it. In honor of the Thank Animaniacs. You. Yes. That's right. <laughs> but, but, you know, talking about the Ultimate Universe, isn't that kind of the Marvel Universe now? Oh, let's hope not, because Spider-Man's dead. But, but I'm saying it, it's, it's kind of like uh, the regular universe has kind of become that early Ultimate Universe. Yeah, yeah. It's very dark Yeah, now. well, yeah. But that's, yeah. That's Marvel now, and that's exactly what they're going to be doing. It's going to be... <clears throat> uh, Nick Fury's son, who looks like Samuel L. Jackson. How he lost his eye, I don't know. Uh, hereditary, <laughs> I don't know. It was the snakes on the plane. 
No, it, it, right. it, it was a six issue limited series, so they could get a little bit more. <laughs> is what it was. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it was no. What is your feel then? Okay, th- that's on Marvel. What do you feel about the new Fifty Two? I mean, because I know numbers wise, they're they're doing great. The new Fifty Two would be fine if they would just follow their own ruling. And poor Batman never even got a new Fifty Two. He's still stuck with oh, an I alternate know. universe. He's still Damien. stuck with Damien. Yeah, from an alternate universe <laughs> love affair with Talia Al Ghul. It doesn't even make sense. Everyone else got a clean slate, but that poor Bruce got yeah. killed and sent through time. Also, uh, Green Lantern. That's, That's right. True. That's right. Yep. Hal Jordan. Hal Jordan's still um, an unemployed jerk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I love Hal Jordan. I do too. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I I didn't love that movie that Ryan Reynolds made, but oh, it's terrible because that wasn't Green Lantern. I heard it was your favorite, Michael. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that and Batman and Robin. <laughs> oh wow. all right now look two of my ba- babe batman and robin i don't think we should put any movie not not the green lantern not anything not even no not even the brenda star movie should be next to oh i'll put Catwoman that, with, yeah, with Cat holly Woman, berry yeah, yeah. Catwoman yeah that's a bookend yeah. right there that's that's the bookend <laughs> because batman and robin was the abomination to end all abominations i think oh yeah wow um, yeah. the new 52 did you uh read any of the zero issues i've read all of them okay nightwing loved it me too. I thought it was phenomenal. Uh, Batgirl, also phenomenal. Yes. Um, Teen Titans? Teen Titans was all right. I liked it. I liked it a lot better than I liked the normal one. Wow. The, no. Well, I mean, the, the, the old 52, I right. would call it. <laughs> World's, um, World's finest. Tim Drake's pa- they, they killed off Tim Drake's parents yeah. uh, in, in like increments, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah it's like the old joke, you know, pig like... Pig that special, you don't eat all at once. <laughs> nice. Yeah, but see, it was kind of cool, the original, though, because you had Captain Boomerang crossing that line that the rogues never crossed. So at the time, that was kind of pretty controversial. Well, actually, uh, I, I think that Jeff Johns had established that uh, Captain Cold will kill uh, when the, the need arises. He never, You never, ever kill a speeder, though, a speedster. That's right. Yeah, that was the rule that the rogues never crossed. I think, but uh, for me, I, I think that there's a lot of really cool ideas in the the new Fifty Two. I think that you're absolutely right. I think that Batman um, and Green Lantern should not ever have gotten like the the free pass. Like I realize that Jeff Johns put a a ton of work behind the you know setting up the Green Lantern Corps. Yeah, but if there's only five years in that whole uh, the new reboot, I have no idea where Kyle Rayner falls. Yeah, where where did he get a ring? Well, now we have a fifth one. Yeah. So it's. it's I'm sorry, we have a what? Now we have the fifth Green Lantern. Yes, uh, Simon. I'm sorry, Simon. What's his last name? I, I, I doesn't matter. All right, there you go. Well, okay. There's my opinion uh, on well, him. How's that? <laughs> The dude that, that uses a gun, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that we didn't like that, no. No, and yeah, Green Lanterns really shouldn't use guns. But, Agreed. Um, and I'm, I'm really digging Earth 2. Oh, I'm liking Earth 2 really well. And tell you the truth, talking about Zero issues, I really like the world's finest Zero issue. Yes, me too. I thought that, I it mean, really, it was emotional. It was. Yeah, yeah, and it was really great to see him in like variants of the costumes. Yeah. That is, yeah, that's cool. I love this, man. I, this is what it's all I, about. Whew. Yeah, I think Power yeah. Girl should go back to the window costume, though. <laughs> the, the cleavage window. Well, I yeah. love that. She's one of my favorite characters as well. I mean, she's even they tried to, to mess with her in the, you know, the, the 80s, late 80s and early mm-hmm. 90s. Oh, yeah, that was with uh, Jimmy uh, Primati. Yeah. Did, and, did their uh, own series. Actually, he, he did it in 2000, but they, oh, they did right. it back... When she was uh, Orion's granddaughter. Oh, that's right. It was horrible. Well, oh, see, I'm a God, big Earth Two person anyway. I mean, I I bow at the idol of Roy Thomas yeah, myself. But you, 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 let's let's be honest. Uh, they could have done worse. They could have made her Dazzler. I mean, oh well, yeah. <sighs> Very <laughs> true. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Less said, but hey, Dazzler had how many issues? I think it was like in the 40s. <laughs> I know. She got yeah. canned. 
I, and, and once again, I go back to the werewolf by night who should still be having issues, but they stopped him at 42. And I'm like, how did Dazzler get as many issues as werewolf by night? And that was like a fantastic book, a well-written, imaginative, great And they brought book. her back. They brought her back. I know. She's now an extreme X-Men. It's terrifying. It's terrifying. She's one of the lead oh. characters. <laughs> <laughs> She'll never be a lead character in anything. Yeah. Speaking of mutant powers... You guys have mutant powers to entertain us every week, and I'm bringing it back around because I want people to know the new seasons, when it's starting. I want to know if, if you happen to know, we ask the other guys, where's our DVD set of season one? We need it. We want it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that's, that's a good question. That's, that's something that people who really want it should uh, just be uh, inundating AMC TV. You should be calling their corporate offices saying, "Where we want our comic book men season one DVDs with all the extras and the uh, the bonus two DVDs." That's right, and I want the Blu-ray set, and I want it to open up like us. We we decided it's got to be like oh. one of those pop-up books, you know. When you open it up, you guys pop up in your superhero outfits, and on one side, and then you turn it, and your zombies on the other side. Oh, that'd be very yeah. cool. I and would I, like that. And and the score store exclusives of the action figures. Yeah, yeah. You got to have your action ah. figures. Yeah. And we, yeah, but did you see the wrap gifts? Uh, the um, the production crew got uh, all of us wrap gifts, and there are um, our superhero bobbleheads. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 So I'll I'll post those pics to Twitter again because they were really cool, and we've got uh, three out of the four at the store. They're they're actually on display at the stash. What happened to the fourth one? They're not one? for sale. Uh, Johnson's got it. I, I think he's picking it up for a ride right now. I think he is too. I think uh, maybe both of them got beat up by Ming on the way to the show. Yeah, and or yeah, Ming uh, Ming did a little beanie and uh, <laughs> had to take Brian uh, captive. That's right. And wow. now he's selling him on eBay for you know whatever the highest bid is. That, that could be uh, not going to be that high. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to let him live this one down, man. And I was I was so prepared to give him a hard time because he he fulfilled one of my life fantasies, okay? Not only did he get to cruise around in the 66 Batmobile, he also wore Adam West cowl in the 66 Batmobile. It was not fair at all. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And uh, I'm going to give you uh, this this would be on the the DVD too, DVD extras for season 1 cuz uh we actually kidnapped the Batmobile. <laughs> We were supposed to just ride it, drive it around the block. And? So I said, when in the name of God am I ever going to get to drive the Batmobile again? Because, you know, it's like, hey, you know what? We don't know where the show is going. Yeah. So uh, I may never get to drive the Batmobile again. So um, throw it in drive, and we're, we're, we're tooling around Red Bank. And I said, hey, Brian, let's go get some hot dogs. There's this um, guy who's got a hot dog truck. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and we were going to, it's over by the, the railroad tracks. I was going to pull in, park the, the car, and just like wave to people as they pass by while we're eating hot dogs, <laughs> leaning up against the Batmobile. Oh. And we were going to get that. We, were, we told the, uh, the camera guys, follow us, because they had no real choice, because that's what they were doing anyway. But um, traffic was so bad at that time of day <laughs> that unfortunately we couldn't make it over there. And there was a guy in a semi who's, uh, who was making a really wide turn, and I'm stuck in traffic, and um, he's coming so close to hitting the Batmobile. He's yelling out, hey, you nervous yet? Hey, you nervous yet? I'm like, I'm not, but you should be, because you touch this car, you're paying the $250,000 right. to get it replaced. So I got no problem with it. You go ahead, scratch do a big scratch along the side. Let's see what happens. Yeah, you scratch the Batmobile, buddy, and then I'll call my yeah. buddy Todd, and he's going to come out there and put the stomp <laughs> down on your forehead. That's like yeah. uh, that is that's like the holiest of holies. It's like oh, oh you hear the angels when you. Oh sense, yeah, yeah, unbelievable, man. I am so I don't have it on there. You yet, had that. Sound I know. Effect. I have the sound effect, but I didn't have it today. But yes, that oh, is uh, that is one of the. Uh, that is one of the dreams of mine, and you guys fulfilled. That's why we live vicariously through you and why we're so excited on the wonderful news that there was going to be a season two. We were so happy, and now we just want you to do it for ten more seasons, man. <laughs> From your lips to God's ears. We, uh, we actually told Ming we wanted to see little Minglets running around, and they said, yep. well, Ming's already got kids. And I was like, yeah, I know. 
Uh, we want to see them grow up and work at the stash. We're ready to see, you know, the, 10 years from now, they'll be employed at the stash, and it'll be great. We can, it'll be Generation 2. <laughs> and Walt will probably still be, you know, harassing them. <laughs> Walt will Generation definitely. Ming. <laughs> 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 that is awesome. That is awesome. Well, Michael, I want to thank you, my friend. It has been an honor to talk to you. It has been enlightening. And, and really, once you've been on Night Watch, man, you're part of our family. So consider yourself part of the crew here anytime you want to come on talk comic books do anything consider yourself part of the family we we love having you thank you guys so much and you guys were awesome i i appreciate it so much and uh i hope you guys get a good night's sleep uh get up are you none of you are going to new york comic-con are you nope unfortunately i wish i was i wish i was quick quick plug for new york comic-con kevin's gonna be there and we're doing a comic book men panel that's right so Hopefully it'll be on YouTube for you guys to see, and uh, I'll, I'll if I can get a word in edgewise. When you're sitting at a podcasting table with Johnson Flanagan and Kevin Smith, word <laughs> is you'll notice that Ming and I are very very quiet all the time. It's just it's like um, the, you ever try to get on a freeway when uh, all the traffic is doing like 105. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's that's me and Ming. We're just we're sitting in our Hyundai. Just, just waiting for uh, break in traffic. That's right. That's right. And you, but you know what the thing is, man. The thing is, look at the company you're in. Even though it's hard to squeeze in there sometimes, man, it would be it, a lot of us would would gladly trade places with that you know experience. We'd love to break in there just like you are. You know, so keep oh, that in very mind. True. You know, we oh, love it. You got it. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Thank no you, man. And good we night. look forward to talking to you again. We'd love it. Awesome. You have a good night. You too. Thanks. Take care. Wow, guys, that uh, that just blew my mind. That's Michael Zapsic. Yeah. Wow, man. We even referenced Doctor Who for, for Hugh. Yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. <laughs> man, I just had such a good time tonight, guys. This has been a good show. We've talked comic books. We've talked comic book men. And I can't wait for that new season to start uh, the 14th, I think it is. It's on the same night as Walking Dead. It's a Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This coming this Sunday. This coming Sunday. Wow. Just for the record, because it's really kind of weird. We haven't been able to say this for a while. Just for the record, Johnny Reed is part of the crew now, the Night Watch crew. Oh, well, thank you very much. Thank you. He uh, he did Hugh's Laundry. I did. He made banana casserole for and, Amanda's children. And uh, basically for me, he did whatever I said for a full week. Oh, Lord. Thank you to all of our wonderful friends worldwide for listening to Night Watch. Without you, there would be no reason to be here. We really do love sharing our lives with you every week. Thanks to our wonderful affiliates who play the show worldwide. Without you, our friends couldn't hear it, and there'd be no point in being here. This wasn't my fault. I'm getting out of here, Damien. All right. Find the gun. I'm gone. We're leaving. We're leaving. I am. We're history. Go. I'm gone. Go yep. We're yesterday's news. Thanks again, everybody, and until next time. Good evening. Oh, really, Johnny? I said good evening. <laughs> really? Good Did evening. you see him? Good evening. That's the start of the night. I say it to end it. Hold on, Johnny. <laughs> oh, wow. How do you like it? Man, back to the paddle one day. <laughs> How do you like I'll it? have your car cleaned in the morning. Thank you. Thank well, you. You do that. We'll never see him again. Wow, I know. That's it's true. over. It's over. <laughs> Don't mess with the Thor helmet. That's right. And have a good evening. Speak to you later. And pleasant nightmares. Oh, you sue me, Miss I. Night Watch is a production of Jackalope Media in association with Jackalope Radio with your host Todd Sheets and co-hosts Hugh McClanahan and Chris Weisbach featuring voice work from September Day also with Amanda H. and Audrey Q. Associate Producers All around me are familiar faces worn out places Worn out faces Bright and early for their daily races Going nowhere, going nowhere Their tears are filling up their glasses No expression, no expression Hide my head, I wanna drown my sorrow No tomorrow, no tomorrow And a 
find it kind of funny, I find it kind of sad The dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had I find it hard to tell you, I find it hard to take When people run in circles, it's a very, very mad Also listen to Nightwatch on the following incredible radio stations. World Talk Radio, Livid Radio, Hawking Radio, Planet Tokyo, Sessions Radio, Power 3201, Z106 FM, Haunted Voices Radio, K94 Rocks, Glue 92, Anomaly Radio, Mystic Age Radio, 96.3 Shane FM, Flash FM, Nomad Radio Network, Yapster FM, My Retro Rock Radio, Double X Radio, 1611 AM, Australia, KBMA, Sports and Entertainment Radio, Robin Valley Community Radio, Radio Crackle, Planet Paranormal, The Black Vault Radio Network, Radio Free Bob, KCOR, WCRP AM, 1620, Rock and Talk Radio, The Point, 99.1 FM, Extreme Indie Radio, Omnicron Radio, WPAZ 1370 Blast Podcast KJO 97.3 FM Indy 104 FM O Radio WDSP 101.9 Fox FM Ghost Village Switch Pod Pure Country Headcase Radio Slack and Bracken Radio Future World Red Finger Radio Catnip Radio Scuttlebutt The Butt at Radio.TheButt.net BNRX Internet Radio for the Extreme KCIA at KCIA1.com Extreme Radio Tampa Ryukin Radio X100 SRN1 The 1KX Network KJAG Radio Random Radio Riff Ref Radio Exile Radio WOQAM Radio FCN Radio Grey Point Brand Name Radio CKDUFM Leaf Pile Radio Rocktown Radio Bizu Homegrown Radio WWRW The Worldwide Radio Web the Dust at www.onthedust.com Radio Vox, Atlantis 102 Land's Edge Radio Mix 94.5 FM 91.5 FM Ghost Radio Jet City Radio Hits 99.9 Extreme Radio 1077 Ghost Radio X The Beat Shadows of the Night East Hill Radio Hot 97.7 FM 91.5 FM BVIR Bearcast Radio, Kudia Radio, World Talk Radio, Surge Radio Network, Radio End, Dragonflight Radio, Beefy Radio, K94 Rocks, Anomaly Radio, Power 3201, and Independent International Radio, Lips 106 FM, Dragonflight Designs Radio, Indie X Radio, The Free Constitution Network, WOQ AM 1690, The Mix 94.5, AM Stereo 930. Radio Enigma, Steel City Radio. If you're an affiliate and your name is not on this list, send me an email and I'll add it as soon as possible. Remember to check out all these great stations for their own days and showtimes for Nightwatch. And don't forget, you can listen to Nightwatch anytime you want to by going to the audio chamber at www.nightwatchradio.com and downloading your favorite episodes for your own personal paranormal pleasure. 
And as always, you can hear Nightwatch live every Tuesday night right here at 9 p.m. Central on JackalopeRadio.com.